Is the UK economy close to a collapse? 2022 has been a messy year for the UK economy. In contrast to what expectations were for the year, at the start of this year, the UK was ranked the fifth largest economy in the world and second largest in Europe after Germany. GDP growth has slowed significantly since January when it initially increased by 0.8% as individuals resumed their usual lives following a spike in Omicron cases in December 2021. The UK's GDP increased by 7.5% last year, which was the fastest yearly growth rate since World War II. In contrast, the United States GDP increased much more in 2021. Now the UK nurses worry that the pound could fall to parity with the dollar. Chaos on the bond market as well as a host of other issues necessitate a need for the Bank of England to intervene. And although a slowdown in the UK economy was not anticipated for 2022, analysts warn that there is a significant chance it may happen in 2023. You may be asking what caused the financial market turbulence in the UK. The rise in the debt-to-GDP ratio during the previous 30 years, was it really a response to the mini-budget or something more widespread? How has the bank reacted to this? And for the rest of us, what does it mean? This video discusses what's happening to the UK economy and provides answers to these questions. If you have not, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. The United Kingdom, also known as Great Britain, a global powerhouse, is on the brink of an economic catastrophe. Whether the former superpower could survive the economic crisis or collapse is yet to be seen, especially following the departure of the Prime Minister at the time, Liz Truss, after only 44 days in office. While the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, forecasts that the UK's growth in 2023 is projected to be even lower than 0.3%, the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, or NIESR, expects that the GDP would increase by 0.8% yearly in 2023 and 1.8% annually in 2024. This could be disastrous for the nation, given the current environment of high prices and a general recession. The individuals is greatly affected by this. According to statistics from November, between November 8 and November 20, 2022, around 9 out of 10 adults reported that their cost of living had grown compared to a year earlier, whereas only 76% reported an increase compared to a month earlier. Adults reported spending little on non-essentials and consuming less fuel in their houses, such as gas or electricity. And as global inflation reaches its highest level in decades in most G7 nations, due to rising food and energy prices, the UK's energy price inflation has remained the highest among the G7 countries reaching a peak of 58% in July 2022. Food prices, including those for grains and veggie oils, have been pressured by the conflict in Ukraine, while European nations that depend on Russian gas supplies have been more susceptible to price increases. In the future, it appears that the British economy will stall significantly as soaring inflation hits households and drives the Bank of England to aggressively boost interest rates despite the stagnant activity. The rise in the market interest rates, which has severely strained pension funds, is another issue the central bank is attempting to address. The UK economy shrank in the third quarter and is now 0.4% lower than what it was at the close of 2019. It is the only G7 economy to have done so. Let's examine the causes of the economic collapse of mighty Britain. The current state of affairs is pretty dire. There's no silver lining in the gloomy clouds, as the IMF's economic outlook for Britain is not particularly positive. And with the Russian President Putin threatening a nuclear strike, the Ukraine crisis is only getting worse, and the unexpected actions of OPEC members have raised serious concerns about the directions of oil prices in the future. One factor that disrupted the UK economy is the war in Ukraine. The Ukraine conflict had a massive impact on the global economy, but unlike many other countries there were only marginally affected, Britain was hit very hard. According to estimates, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine has cost the British economy more than 50 billion, all in the first six months of Russia's invasion. Because of the growing energy prices, the war has had a bad overall impact on Europe's economy, but because Britain is a crucial NATO member, it also had to give Ukraine financial support in addition to military equipment. While the lasting effects of Brexit on the British economy were largely predicted, the situation deteriorated in April 2019 and beyond as multinational companies withdrew more than $1 trillion from British banks and moved close to $150 billion of their assets abroad. Before this, 
the financial institutions were already experiencing trouble owing to the shift in currency. This led to a significant liquidity bottleneck. The British real estate market, which was once the most lucrative in all of Europe, saw a sharp decline in foreign direct investment. All of this caused the economy to decline sharply, which became a recurrent trend in 2022. Before the war in Ukraine, the United Kingdom was already reeling from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic was persistent and caused significant damage to the country's economic growth. After the Brexit in 2019 crisis, just when the country had a chance to bounce back, the income and expenditures of the government were out of balance as the GDP as a whole shrank. Yet the financial strain on the exchequer increased significantly. All aspirations of an economic recovery were dashed by the COVID-19 related challenges, prolonged effects over more than two years. Recent data, however, indicate that while some other European countries' positions have significantly improved, Britain's trade has plateaued. Many economists attribute the UK's less optimistic future to Brexit. British officials kept making incorrect choices time and time again. One such instance is the mini-budget from September 22, in which Finance Minister Kwasi Kwarteng promised a £45 billion tax cut and proclaimed a freeze on energy costs, both of which were practically impossible. He reasoned that if individuals had more cash available to them, their purchasing power would rise. They would spend more, and as a result, more and more firms would be drawn to invest in his nation. But there was a significant fallout as a result. Banks have to raise their mortgage rates as a result of the turbulent markets and the declining value of the currency. After 38 days in office, he paid the price and was removed. Things are also changing quite quickly in Europe as a whole. Earlier in November, the Bank of England issued a warning that the UK's economy would go through its deepest downturn since the 1940s. Additionally, the third quarter decreases stands in contrast to France and Germany's 0.2 and 0.5% growth, respectively, as well as Italy's 0.2%. The European Commission issued a warning, predicting that the Eurozone will most certainly enter a recession in the fourth quarter due to the high inflation and rising interest rates. It now anticipates that inflation will reach an annual top of 8.5% at the end of the year. Compared to many of its overseas peers who are struggling as inflation takes hold, the UK labor market is extremely tight. The inflation game has undergone a significant shift. In October, inflation hit a 41-year high of 11.1%. If this is synchronized, inflation in the Eurozone was 10.6%, which was also incredibly high. France does stand out as an anomaly with 7.1% inflation in October thanks to some notably significant energy market measures the country had in place to mitigate the energy crisis caused by the war in Ukraine. If Britain's leadership is sincere about ending the current situation, they will need to make some tough, severe, and painful decisions. In his first few days on the job, France Minister Jeremy Hunt largely undid Liz Truss's plan to cut taxes while increasing expenditure and borrowing. All in a bid to restore confidence and economic stability, he said, I am under no illusion that there is a tough road ahead, one which will require extremely difficult decisions to restore confidence and economic stability. But to achieve the long-term, sustainable growth, we need to grip inflation, balance the books, and get debt falling. There is no other way. Weak economic growth puts pressure on the UK government, which has been trying to earn back investors' trust after the September run on the pound as well as the bond market catastrophe. At this very moment, British financial companies are experiencing a liquidity crisis as the London Stock Exchange continues to decline dramatically day after day. The issues won't be easily resolved by the new Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Thanks for watching.